Have the guns gone silent for good in Colombia? Or is it too soon to celebrate the end of Latin America's longest conflict dating back to 1964? The government putting to an October 2nd referendum last week's deal in Havana, an agreement hailed for the novel ways it promises to guarantees for the FARC to put down weapons and come out of the jungle. Will the guerrillas, though, listen to their leadership? In particular, what about those who dabble in the drug trade? And what about the livelihood and safety of indigenous peasants? Big doubts, and there are big doubters, most notably supporters of former President Alvaro Uribe, who bekry the amnesty agreement that is part of the deal. Too soon to celebrate? Or have times changed for good? Today in the France Venquet debate, we're looking at Colombia's path to peace. With us, he's the Wall Street Journal's former Colombia correspondent, Peruvian journalist Inti Landaro, now the Paris correspondent uh, for the Dow Jones Newswire Services. Thank you for being with us. Uh, good evening. Uh, also with us from Bogota, Samuel Hoyos, congressman for Alvaro Uribe's Democratic Center Party. Thank you for joining us. Uh, thank you for contacting me. From Medellin, she is with the Yes for Peace in Colombia campaign, Laura Rios uh, Giraldo. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. And we're joined uh, from uh, Northwestern University in Chicago by uh, Daniel Landsberg, uh, who teaches at the Kellogg School of Management. Welcome back, sir. Thank you. It's always a pleasure. The France Vent Get Debate, where you can join the conversation on Facebook and Twitter, the hashtag F24Debate. The ceasefire has begun in earnest since midnight local time now starts the campaign for that October 2nd referendum. Andrew Hillier has the story. A ceasefire to end the longest running armed conflict in the Western Hemisphere. After four years of peace talks, the leader of the FARC made the historic announcement on Sunday, putting a stop to half a century of fighting. In my position as commander of the FARC EP, I order all of our leaders, our units, and each and every one of our combatants to cease fire and hostilities in a definitive manner against the Colombian state from midnight to night. The conflict has left an estimated 260,000 people dead and internally displaced close to 7 million. 45,000 others have also been documented as missing. The deal will allow the FARC to participate in the country's political process and provide an amnesty for the group's fighters. They'll also hand over their weapons to United Nations monitors. But analysts say that not everyone is pleased with the terms of the deal. The families who lost their loved ones to the FARC rebels might be indignant about this deal. The final agreement will be signed in the coming weeks at the United Nations headquarters. But the final endorsement of that deal still needs to be put to Colombians in a referendum on the 2nd of October. Uh, this is, let me start with you, Inti Landauer. This is a peace process that began just four years ago. Uh, would you say it's gone faster than you thought? No, I wouldn't say that. I think four years uh, is, is, a lot, is a lot of time to negotiate a peace, even, even though the, 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 the conflict had been going on for uh, more than 50 years. I think many Colombians also thought this process was pretty slow and expected results uh, way earlier than, than, than what we're having now, which also fuels some, some of the doubts they, 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 have, they are expressing now, some people are expressing now. They're expressing now, will it be close, that referendum vote? I think it's hard to say. The, the, the polls are showing a majority of people are in favor of, of, of the peace agreement, but many things are not really known by the majority of people right now. The other thing that would go in favor of a, of a yes during the vote is the fact that the, the, the structure of the vote might be favorable for the, for, for the yes. How so? You, 
even in the case of a lot of abstention, which is probably what it will happen because in Colombia, uh, few people uh, attend elections. If uh, yeah, 30%, like 13% 13 of, the of, the, of the electorate uh, supports the, the, the deal, the, 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 the yes, the yes would, would go. So it means you don't need that many people to, to support it. Uh, Laura Rios, Geraldo, your thoughts. Well, why are you voting yes? Well, because uh, I think this agreement is something to be proud of. Uh, I'm part of the youth of Colombia. Uh, I never live in a country with peace. My parents, they never live in a country with peace. And I think my grandparents, they deserve a country with peace. This is a day that we are happy for. Finally, uh, an official cease of fire and the first step to begin to build peace. Of course, this is not uh, the end of the war. You know that there are many actors in Colombia. There, there are many violent actors, but uh, there is no good violence. Uh, and peace is, is something we need and something we deserve. So I, I vote for the yes because the agreement, I think it has, uh, it is a transitional justice step in which the victims are at the center of the process. And the, the many things they agree, um, I think they, they, are ben, they are very reasonable. And, and so I'm campaigning and also uh, this is something we, we are trying to, to, to convince people to participate because this is the first time we can participate as, as people in, in a process that is part of us and that would make us part of. Yeah, trying to get out the vote is going to be uh, uh, one of the issues, as, uh, as was said by Inti. Uh, let, let me bring in you in, the, you in here, uh, Samuel Hoyos. Uh, you, you just heard there Laura say that uh, uh, there are many things to salute in the deal, most notably this concept of transitional justice, uh, whereby uh, it's going to be skewed as to who gets an amnesty and who doesn't. Well, here the discussion is not a peace or war. The discussion must be how can we achieve the peace in Colombia? Uh, I believe that the dialogue, the process, is the only way we can solve our political violence. But these conditions, or the conditions of the actual ag agreement, uh, are not uh, fine for us. Because we, we don't believe that giving a amnesty or impunity to crimes against humanity is the way of achieving peace. We don't believe that considering a drug dealing as a political crime is the way to achieve peace. We don't believe that we can achieve peace without receiving all the kids that they are against their volunty in the in the far lines. So uh, hang on, you say amnesty for crimes against humanity. There will be special courts created, though, uh, to judge atrocities. Yeah, but it sim simulates an application of justice. The, it very clear it says the one who confessed uh, crimes against humanity won't pay even one day of jail, not in uh, reclus uh, in prison. It will be, uh, for example, uh, having the passport and, and don't let them out of Colombia for five years. It's, this country is not a jail, so it won't uh, satisfy uh, the, the international criteriums of penal justice. In Tilandauer, is it how you read uh, the, the, the amnesty provisions? Uh, Basically, basically, it's 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 true. The, the 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 justice process goes through confession. So as as the uh, leaders of the FARC confess on the atrocities they, they committed, the the atrocities as investigated, and the the final idea is that the, these leaders won't go to jail. And that is, I think, one of the aspects that make many Colombians doubt about the process is the absence of punishment for those who, for, for the guerrilla leaders who've been during decades uh, killing people all over Colombia. Daniel Landsberg, is this uh, the biggest obstacle to approving that deal, this uh, how the amnesties work, the transitional justice system will work? 
I would say so. Uh, that has been the uh, essentially the point that has uh, proven the lightning rod over the, the last uh, several, I mean, months, uh, going on to years. Uh, the what is what is really strange to me, uh, especially coming from uh, neighboring Venezuela, uh, which has a very different political dynamic, is that traditionally Colombian uh, politics has been actually very united. The level, there's always been a lot of uh, political polarization between the street and the capital, but there's very bit, never been very much political polarization in the capital writ large. Uh, you've had a system since the 50s in which uh, basically the parties essentially trade off power. And that's something that I think uh, we're seeing change very quickly. That's a system that has survived, I think, in part as a result of having these external enemies uh, that sort of the ruling government can uh, really unite around because they pose something of an existential or at least a very strong threat, uh, be they narco trafficking, uh, be they the ELN, uh, M19, FARC. As these become less salient, as these outside unifying threats become less of, 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 a, of a check on polarization, Polarization. We're seeing polarization in Colombia at levels in which I've never seen it before. And I think that that's uh, really a cause for concern. I think that the, the problems with uh, the, the peace or a lot of the, uh, the, the questions people have about the peace right now are centered upon this issue of amnesty. And it is a, a very important issue. You know, when is it justice, the fair price to pay for peace? But at the same time, there's other issues. And in a, in, in a hyperpolarized or fast becoming hyperpolarized uh, set of circumstances, those issues are going to keep coming up. Uh, and, and it's going to be, in a sense, less important what the issues are than the fact that you have factions uh, really uh, for to an unprecedented degree uh, that you've had in recent Colombian history. Well, it's day one of the campaign. Laura Rios Geraldo, would you say it's very polarized where you are in Medellin? Yeah, and mostly because Medellin is a city where every, uh, there is a lot of political division. I just want to go straight to a point when you talk about amnesties and impunities. Uh, it is important to know that the ICC has their eyes on the process and that the agreement, it, it, it involves the, the supervision of the ICC. So I think it, 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 we have to be careful when we talk about amnesties and impunities because as, as you were talking in, there is a lot of polarization and mostly in Medellin, a city where the most, most of the people, they vote for uh, Centro Democratico and they vote for, uh, they are for uh, uh, Alvaro Uribe. And al there, because there are political leaders that are um, public publicly against the process, it is hard uh, to, to, for this campaign to convince everybody because there is also a belief in which it's, more, it's not about the agreement itself, but it, it, the political division uh, makes it very hard for people to start understanding what this agreement means and what this uh, moment of history means for Colombia, because it's about uh, reconciliation and forgiveness too. Mm -hmm. Well, regarding this uh, amnesty, I think it's it's kind of ugly to let people guilty of, of massacres go free, but it's also part of any peace deal that, that has ever been reached in, in, in the world. You need, you need to, to forgive at some point to some people. The problem, I think, in this uh, agreement reached by, uh, between the government and the, and, and the FARC is that that amnesty is not a blanket amnesty. It was not a uh, an, an amnesty you grant to every side. But it's, it's so people from the army, people from the paramilitary groups, people from other actors of the, of the conflict could face jail terms. And that may be an issue, I think, in, in, in the longer run to, 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 to maintain the peace in Colombia. Right. In that respect, it's different from, say, South Africa. Yeah. I'm not totally familiar with, with uh, South Africa, but I think, I think the, the idea is the same, is the people confess their, their crimes and then we go through a process of, um, of reconciliation. But the thing in Colombia is that it's not only the FARC that was, that's been committing crimes and massacres for, for, for decades. Uh, Samuel Hoyos, your, your reaction to what Daniel Landsberg said earlier about how uh, we're seeing just as there's the possibility of a peace deal with uh, this uh, half-century-long rebel movement, 
we're seeing that more and more in, in Bogota, where you are, the politics is becoming more polarized. How do you explain that? Yeah, the country is polarized, but I believe that uh, all, all of the Colombian people want peace. Uh, the thing is, if we don't solve the, the, the elements who make violence in Colombia, narco-traffic and drug dealing is the, the main source of the, of the violence here, uh, it has uh, multiplied by two. In the, in the past two years, between, uh, they were talking about peace in Cuba with FARC and here in Colombia in the, in the countryside, they were growing plants of coca uh, and exporting cocaine uh, through Venezuela with the, uh, with the complicity of, of the authorities of that country, of the Maduro government. So we don't understand how they if they really want to make a peace process, because they are still uh, kidnapping, they are still uh, uh, drug trafficking, they are still um, uh, making violence in, in some country, uh, in some parts of the country. So we can't believe them. Uh, we, we have tried for many times to make a, pre, a peace process with them, but uh, they they don't gave us uh, we we don't trust them. We don't trust so, them right now. Let, let's listen to the main protagonist, President Santos. He needs that uh, yes to win next month's referendum while garnering, as Into was saying, thirteen percent of the electorate. Let's hear what he has to say. La paz, peace, siempre es mejor que la It's guerra. always better than war. La paz. Peace will dispel our fears. All Colombians grew up with such fear during the long-armed conflict. Peace will bring displaced people back home and allow them a life of dignity. The campaign for the yes underway, so is the campaign for the no, led by President Santos's predecessor. The government has used the peace process to discredit our democracy in front of our people and before the international community. The longest standing uninterrupted democracy in Latin America, which has survived every challenge without kneeling to terrorism, views dictatorships and the FARC's drug terrorism as a legitimate insurgency as much as those who confronted political dictatorships. Daniel Landsberg, there it is, that word drug terrorism. Uh, this business of how do you crack down on the cocaine trade uh, while sealing a peace deal, how do you do it? So I think that, that, that that's a really important question. And I wanted to sort of start up by building a little bit on what Samuel was just saying uh, about the fact that there have been attempts, uh, most notably under President Pastrana, in the past to uh, get the FARC to the table and to set these peace deals up. Uh, and during the four years in which this process has been going on, Latin America has begun changing in ways that were unexpected four years ago. Uh, the sort of uh, pink tide, or the so-called pink tide of, of leftist movements and populist movements has been receding very quickly. Uh, Havana has uh, reached detente with the United States in an ongoing process, and the possibility for the FARC to continue using friendly borders, both for drug trafficking and uh, this is something that the FARC has managed to capitalize on quite a bit, that when they, in, in, in previous instances, when they've been being chased by Colombian security forces, they've been able to dart into Equatorian or Venezuelan territory uh, with relative impunity, places where the Colombian forces can't follow without causing an international incident. With regime change, likely within the next couple of years, uh, in Venezuela at least, that's something that would uh, very strongly weaken the FARC's ability to defend itself militarily. So in a sense, the, one of the frustrations I'm hearing a lot from Colombians who oppose the process is that there's this sense that if you wait a little longer, you don't have to negotiate a peace, you can negotiate their surrender. And there's arguments that can be made on that on either side. The on, on narco side. element Daniel, is something that... Daniel, I'm going to have to interrupt that... you very quickly because we have to take a quick break. We'll yes. pick up on these points. When we come back, you're watching the False Conquest.